has been an awakening. Have you felt it? Welcome back. This is The Fan Awakens, episode 15. It is our first episode coming off of Star Wars Celebration. Took a, a, a short hiatus, and we have a ton of news that we're, we've been sitting on. And before I get into any of that, though, I do have some big news, and that is that uh, I'm back, of course, but joining me as my new co-host on the show, uh, I'm thrilled about this. This is something we've been wanting to do for years now. Uh, my None other than my brother, Miguel, in the studio. How are you doing, pal? I'm doing great. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty okay now. You know, the day, to be honest, wasn't great, <laughs> but... Nothing cheers me up like talking Star Wars. Oh, I know um, that. <laughs> but uh, I'm glad that we can finally uh, finally got the opportunity to do this and come together on this podcast. You'll also be on the movie podcast as well. Yep. Um, but this is our first real. Uh, this is our first foray together. You've guest hosted with me before, um, and you've called in. But this is this is a whole thing. Yeah. Uh, so I just want to welcome you, of course, properly. And without further ado, we do have a lot to talk about. Obviously, the first topic on the list being Star Wars Celebration, yep. which I went. We I spent a week, and I what? did not. You did not. No. I was at school. Yeah, man. I was learning. I was learning me some stuff, but I was following along on. Yeah, we were online. calling and talking yeah, every you, night. We call, uh, yeah, we called me every night. Got re- recapping ourselves what what happened that day. Who you saw? <laughs> you got to see me. Uh, geeking out live on the star wars show yeah that was fun uh i got a couple people who texted me and called me throughout and like <laughs> i think i see you staring with a blank <laughs> smile up in the background of the star wars show live um you i was on the state you know by the stage the star wars sh- uh, show live stage almost the entire time almost the entire time so if you watch it you're bound to see me either behind or as they're sweeping over the crowd i was pretty much first couple rows yeah i'm jealous i that that was pretty cool seeing you on, on i mean it's surreal for me show. because you know first con i've ever been to yep and for it to be star wars celebration which is my dream convention you know i mean there's thousands oh, sure. thousands of conventions and to be honest I am a little afraid to go to another con now because it's, it's <laughs> you don't just not be let down. It's not going to live up to this because yeah. I, and I don't, I guess you can say, Oh, well, you don't know that you haven't been to another con. But the thing is, I just hear it from so many people. I, I met so many people along this trip who have been to many cons, you know, many celebrations mm-hmm. and they do generally all agree that Star Wars celebration is very special in the fact that, it's all for one thing. It's all Star Wars. Yeah. Everybody's there to celebrate the same thing. Yes, there are different things that people are more passionate about than others. You know, some people are there because they love the prequels only. Yeah. Or not only, but more. But that's Some there. people that's, are really, yeah. you know, their main squeeze is the original trilogy. Some people like me, the sequels. While I do love them all. Yeah. Um, That was kind of what I was really hyped about. Mm-hmm. Um. And yes, there are other cons that have a very specific focus, but not on this scale. Yeah, no. Not on this scale. And they really brought a lot of heavy hitters there. Mm-hmm. I mean, just standing on the stage, I mean, I was I was pretty much first three rows of people, mm-hmm. um, give or take, for every major um, appearance. Episode 9, man, they had Daisy Ridley come out with Kathleen Kennedy, the first two people from the cast. And to be honest, we were sitting there, and I, I was really expecting maybe boyega Mm -hmm. and that's it yeah i wasn't really expecting much and i mean much that's that would i would have been ecstatic with boyega coming out yeah and i was but so we got kathleen and we got daisy Mm -hmm. and i almost fainted i mean i I didn't almost faint but i was like (laughs) it felt a little weak in the knees like that's yeah it it was a pinch (laughs) me moment um just and and something that i really uh took note of is how how talented that Daisy really is because when you see her on the stage and I'm standing there and she's talking, she's just so bright and vibrant mm-hmm. and like just seems so pure, you know. Yeah. And then to see when you watch, really watch and pay attention to what she's doing in The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi, she gets really gritty. She gets really intense, and it's just hard to imagine seeing her talking. Like imagine her, you know, flipping that switch. Yeah. And just becoming so intense on a set. Like, I think that you can see Adam driver and you could see like, Oh, that guy could yeah. definitely go there. Oh, for sure. Um, 
But with Daisy Ridley, you know, it kind of took a step back while she was being interviewed. Mm -hmm. Like it, it is pretty incredible to me, um, and I don't think she gets enough credit as an actor uh, within these films, to be honest. But you know, then you have Boyega came out, and he was just <laughs> like, yeah, okay, Boyega. people call uh, Anthony Daniels Mister Star Wars Celebration. Yeah. He's good. That torch is being shared now with Boyega. That okay, guy is okay. so awesome. Um, of course, they had these T-shirt guns they kept shooting um, that were Star Wars themed. Mm -hmm. I caught uh, a, a T-shirt from Aaron Kellyman. That's is that? Aaron? Oh my god! Yes, she played Emphis Nest in Solo, oh. uh, and so that was awesome. And I was in the yeah. first couple rows, so I didn't expect to catch any shirts. Yeah. Um, but they didn't put enough CO2 <laughs> <laughs> and it, it had a light lob. Thankful right? for you. Thankfully. I was very yeah. thankful. Um, but so episode nine, I, I did, I will say that I did cry throughout this, um, this convention, mm -hmm. but I, and I'm someone who I'm not really a crier, you know, no, you're not, I, we not watch these movies and I, it's not that I'm like trying to be all macho or anything. I just don't really have tears induced very often from yeah, no. film or, and, and I'm, and I'm yeah. very, very, very attached to movies. It's not yeah. that I get knots in my throat or whatever. I usually just don't actually shed yeah. tears. Yeah. But when that episode nine trailer, Oh man, <laughs> the girl in front of me, God bless her heart. She had to take a knee. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't quite have to take a knee, but I was, uh, I was barely holding on, my man. Yeah. Uh I was I was tearing up, sobbing, I would say. Just seeing Ray when she you know, it's just a really powerful moment. Seeing yeah. her um, you know, do that little corkscrew sheave sheave move. Yeah. Flip over that tie. Um was big the Lando moment. And another thing, you saw the panel. Yes. Episode nine. Yes, I did. How smooth is that guy? Oh man. Lando never left me. He what how eloquent did he talk to the point he scared uh kathleen <laughs> scared. and jj they had no idea what this man was gonna say nah. but the crowd was taking yeah, loving every it. moment and i think it's just so wonderful and it's unfortunate that it took until episode nine to get him back yeah. but we got him back and that's really all that matters um i think the cast looks fantastic mm -hmm. um there's a lot of sort of ambiguous uh, the the trailer is very ambiguous. I'll say that. Okay. Um, we don't know story wise what's going on really. Yeah. No. Um, and obviously JJ and his whole mystery box thing. Mm -hmm. Who knows if this is even, maybe you took a page out of the Russo brothers book. Who knows if it's all real? Yeah. Okay. okay. Real footage. Yeah. I wouldn't doubt. I do have a question to post for you. It's been going around the internet quite a bit. Okay. Do you believe? First off, who do you think is flying that TIE fighter? Because some people seem to believe that it's a dream, which I don't think is no, the case. No, no. Some people believe that it's training, which I think yeah, is possible. I've, I've, I've heard that. I hope not. I yeah. hope it's not training. I know the obvious thing would be, oh, it's Kylo. But yeah, the way no, the, I, don't, I don't feel it's Kylo. I don't think it's Kylo either. I, want, I would love for it to be Kylo, yeah. but I don't think it is him. That TIE is definitely something different than we've ever seen, though, mm, yeah. which would almost make me believe it is kylo because he would definitely have a special a special yeah. ship you know he had the you know with the vader and mm -hmm. kylo they have the tie interceptor and you know different ships yeah um it just would make sense but you know there's also the rumor that there's those red stormtroopers mm -hmm. um but we haven't really had that confirmed yeah and people were saying oh it's going to be Ky kylo's like personal guard okay of stormtroopers um which would make sense for him to have them flying like red and black TIE fighters. Yeah. Uh, but I guess we'll see. Mm -hmm. But I will tell you the energy in that entire convention, when Sheev himself comes out, Ian McDermott, it says, roll it again. Just, oh. I was shook. Yeah, I bet I was you were. Shook. I bet you were. I had a chill. Like, and then, oh, I'm sorry for rambling on, but, you know, the last day of the con, I got to meet Ian McDermott and Ray Park. And yeah. the late great Peter Mayhew, rest may he rest in peace. Yeah. Um, and that guy, Peter Mayhew, I just want to say real quick, was one of the just most. He was so kind, and I could mm -hmm. tell that you know he wasn't in a good place. You could tell that he was in pain, and mm -hmm. I felt kind of bad. And it was an honor to meet him, and I told him that, of course. Um, but he still was he was making jokes, you know, okay. when I was going yeah. up to him, he was joking around and making funny faces and all the pictures, and uh, I can I can tell that. I think the only reason someone would really be doing that is because they love um, the community and the fandom of Star Wars yeah. and it means so much to them. 
So I really appreciated that he took that time and, you know, was spending the last of his days. Not that he necessarily knew that, but, mm. you know, I think it's special that so many people got to be touched by him um, before he passed, yeah. unfortunately. But he did live a good life. And um, I also, you know, Ray Park and Ian McDermott, they, in line, they were telling us, you know, no handshakes, no hugs. Yeah. Don't touch them. And we get in there and Ray Park's like, hey, mate, how you doing? <laughs> Reaches his hand out and like pad my shoulder. He's like, how you doing? Yeah. And then Ian, he, he's great too. How are you yeah. doing, sir? <laughs> Shakes my hand and uh, fantastic experience. I'll say Ray Park is just a big old bundle of energy. <laughs> he is, man. You see all these videos of him. He was showing videos like last out. And it's like <laughs> yep. they were pretty they much were tearing up. Da- they're tearing everything down. he was down. still walking the floor. He's still chilling. Yeah. I mean, who's going to tell him to leave? I wouldn't. Not me either. <laughs> uh, but Celebration was incredible. Um, I will say, I want to have a little ranking with you right now. Okay. Of the things that we learned about or were actually officially kind of announced or had a main, I'll say panel-wise, our major okay. panels. Okay. So we have Galaxy's Edge, mm-hmm. Episode Nine, mm-hmm. Mandalorian, which I don't think you can fairly assess because I, you I did, can't. Because all the I people didn't at get home to see. Didn't get to see the footage. Yeah. Thank God. I was so happy with that. I'm yeah, sorry that- for the people who didn't make <laughs> it, but like. It is kind of a cool thing getting to have something exclusively. Yeah, you something that they you get to like, rub in my face. They showed us like seven minutes. That is insane. It was insane. It was incredible. Yes, it got leaked online and whatnot, but oh, I yeah, didn't don't know. I'm trust not me, watch it doesn't it, do it justice. You got to see it in good quality. Yeah. Um, okay, so we got Galaxy's Edge, Mandalorian, uh, Episode Nine, Nine, and Clone Wars, Clone Wars, and Jedi Fallen Order. Jedi Fallen Order. We're gonna rank. Uh, least excited and most excited and I will preface this by saying that I can't speak for you but I am excited for every single one of the things that I listed yeah uh, I'll start out number five okay I'm gonna go ahead and I'm s- it hurts to say this and I'm uh-huh. very very excited for it but it's Fallen Order yeah me. I figured you were gonna say that uh, my number five is Fallen Order mm-hmm. um, that's just because I, I mean, everything else I'm just much more invested in, I yeah, suppose. Yeah. Uh, how about you? What's your number five? Uh, my number five, and I know you're not going to like me for this, Eli. I understand. Y- you already know what it is. I do. But it is Clone Wars. Yeah, because... Like, I'm not saying that I'm not excited for it. I'm just saying that all the I episodes, haven't have you? seen... I've seen maybe 10 total episodes. Yeah, so that makes so, sense. It's not fair for me to be like, oh, I'm just not excited for it. I'm excited for Like, I hear Star Wars, and I'm instantly excited. I mean, yeah, and, and the thing is, I've watched through, um, you know, the Clone Wars yeah. animated show. Several times. Uh, several, several times. <laughs> I would venture to say many. Um, yeah, no, b- definitely many. I remember, but what still, was it, last summer when you just that, watched it? Okay, time to yeah. restart. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And even and the thing that really gets me, I mean, Ahsoka coming back, and mm-hmm. I don't know if everybody at home knows this, but... Ray Park came in and did mocap for a big fight scene with Ahsoka. Um, but that being said, it's still number four. Yeah. It's next on my <laughs> list. Clone Wars saved. Um, I'm just super amped for it. Uh, you talked about it briefly, but I mean, just to see, get to have Dave Filoni um, sort of cap off this thing how he wanted to. Mm-hmm. Um, have the uh, Siege of Mandalore showcased in this thing. The return of Maul, the return of Ahsoka. Yes, we sort of know these characters' fates from Rebels, but it's nice to still see this chapter um, sent off the way that it should have been along. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's pretty much it. You know, I will say I also got, not to flex on y'all, but I got an <laughs> uh, Ahsoka pop signed by Ashley Eckstein, which is a huge highlight of the con. Which we're looking at right now. Those are two different ones. I yeah, that's that. the that's the pop I wanted all along too. Okay, I just couldn't find it. Okay, so I settled for that. I okay. guess it all worked out. Yeah, that it all works out <laughs> in the end. Um, but yeah, what what would be your number four? My number four would be Mandalorian. I'm not saying that I'm not. Cause you haven't seen it, the footage. It, yeah, exactly. You I haven't, haven't seen, seen the, footage, the footage, so it's hard. Like, I'm not saying that I'm not incredibly excited for it. I of am course, that's in- what we're saying, man. Goodness, I'm- like it, I am incredibly excited. Everything for on it. this list, I'm at a nine. Yeah, or I'll, I'll say it. It is like uh, there. The difference between my four and three are like point blank. It's like picking like, hairs. Yeah, exactly. Separating it, hairs. It's hard for me to choose, but 
I'm going with the Mandalorian for number four. I'm super excited. Like, yeah, because I I just watched all of Game of Thrones just yeah, in the past month. Pedro Pascal and seeing Pedro Pascal in there, and I was like, because I hadn't really seen him in anything. Yep. And seeing how like how did you he watch does Triple Frontier? No, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> He's good in that. So I just saw him in that, and I was like, wow, this guy is incredible like i love him yeah and that just made me super excited knowing that he's gonna be the mandalorian just seeing him in headline is such a huge property yeah exactly i can't wait to see carl what, weathers what they do with it like i obviously you've seen a little bit I have. of it but i like i can't wait till disney plus finally comes out and i can just and especially this. when you hear the team behind it i mean all the directors uh bryce dallas howard of course, Dave Filoni making his... Yeah, you didn't know that? No. Yeah, Bryce Dallas Howard, I believe she's going to be in the show and she's directing an episode. Really? And uh, Dave and um, John Favreau. Yeah, I was about um, to say, Happy Hogan. <laughs> yeah, Dave, Dave and John Favreau both said that the very much the prereq to, to direct an episode was you had to be a big Star Wars fan, like mm. previously to being interested or anything yeah. like that. Um, and of course, she's the daughter of Ron Howard. Yeah. Ron Howard helped... <laughs> as a second year director on, I believe at least Re uh, revenge of the Sith. But I mean, he's, he's been best friends with one of George Lucas's best friends for decades. Mm -hmm. So I would assume that star Wars was uh, a big influence in the home. Yeah. <laughs> growing up. So oh, I have yeah. no doubt that she has something incredible for us. Taika Waititi, of course, oh, man. <laughs> which everybody knows Every when they showed all the directors, when Taika came up, he got the biggest cheer. That is, uh, even, I didn't even know. I didn't realize <laughs> What? I'm not caught up. You didn't know that Taika was directing <laughs> an episode? <laughs> no. I remember seeing him in that photo that was on John Favreau's yeah, Instagram. It's not IG-88, I don't believe. It's an IG droid. Okay. But I don't think it's IG-88. Okay. Uh, but yeah, and he's voicing, you know, doing yeah. some kind I knew, of voice. I knew he was voicing, but I didn't realize that he was going to be directing an episode. Yeah, some of the hi highlighting some of the directions, and I'm going to forget a few, but uh, we got Dave Filoni mm -hmm. directing his first piece of live action, which is long overdue, and he's doing the pilot. Okay. And I think people at first, including myself, were a little like, why isn't John Favreau? Yeah. And that, it makes so much sense now because he's he was working on The Lion King while doing this. Okay. So he would literally spend the morning working on The Lion King, then go to The Mandalorian set, then go back to work on The Lion King, and back and forth constantly. So he definitely didn't have the time to yeah. full on direct an episode. Um, but it's crazy. He talked about how he wrote four episodes before even knowing if it was going to happen or anything. That's why. Maybe before he even pitched it, he had four episodes written, which is great. It shows how passionate he is. And he, he and um, Filoni have been talking about this for a long time. Uh, but so we have Taika Waititi, Bryce Dallas Howard, um, uh, Dave mm -hmm. Filoni, yeah. uh, Rick Famuyiwa. Okay. Was, have you seen Dope? No. Dude, you gotta <laughs> see Dope. He directed Dope, and that movie is, uh, for lack of better terms, Dope. It's great. It's fantastic. I know that made you sigh. Um, I mean, I know, and you know, I love a good pun, yep. but that just hurt. Yeah, that was that was a bit too obvious. I'll, yeah. I'll give you that. And uh, very telegraphed. Yeah, I knew it was very coming. telegraphed. I think Stevie Wonder could have seen that one coming. That's but a bit much. <laughs> look, look, uh, and. Uh, I forget who else is directing, but okay. that right there is an incredible list. Mm -hmm. Giancarlo Esposito starring in the show um, as a M Imperial officer. Okay. Uh, we have Gina Carano mm -hmm. uh, and she's, her physicality is incredible. And I think that I wasn't really a Gina Carano fan until I got to hear her speak personally. Okay. And heh, just trying to flex on you again, but no, really, she <laughs> just talked about how she's worked on, and you know, she comes from an, uh, an, uh, an MMA background. Mm hmm and so, you know, she gets a lot of these, like, BS roles. She kind of yeah. talked about she's worked on a lot of sets where there's not really much passion, and it's kind yeah. of like a, yeah. Like, just, hey, let's get this let's done. Just, yeah, get this done. And it wasn't until this film where she really felt that kind of passion on set every day. Yeah. And she doesn't want to do anything ever again that doesn't have this kind of passion. Mm -hmm. That kind of touched my heart. And um, just the way that she spoke about everybody working on it together uh so yeah the mandalorian i really got stuck on that sorry but they're That's shooting okay. models dude the ilm yeah. guys built these rigs in their basements and uh shot models and all that it's insane but that is not even wh where am i that, at that was my number four that was your number four sorry we yeah. got off track <laughs> uh so my number three then so you got 
three options. <laughs> I mean, I know what my number yeah. one is. Yeah, my I know. number three and my number two are very close. Uh huh. And I'm gonna go ahead and say that my number three is got about to hurt me. <laughs> it's Galaxy's Edge. Look, it's Galaxy's Edge, and don't take that the wrong. I, it's just because there's uncertainty behind each number three and number two. Okay. Although Mandalorian looks incredible, which ha, that's my number two. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Mandalorian looks incredible. There's still uncertainty. It's uh-huh. the first Star Wars action, yeah. Star Wars live action show like yeah. this. Um, I mean, it looks incredible. Everything on paper, it should be phenomenal. The budget on it. Mm-hmm. Carl Weathers, who played Apollo Creed, famously. Said that he's been on you know hundred million dollar film sets and they don't look as good as the sets they're working on. Uh, shout out Apollo, shout out Rocky. Oh my uh, goodness, <laughs> your tomato, your bum. Stop. Anyways, but with Galaxy's Edge, um, yes, we live in California and we're very we're pretty close. We're pretty you know? closer than a lot of people. Closer than a lot of people. Uh, we don't have to fly. <laughs> yeah, no, we uh, could drive. You could technically, although it would be terrible, make a day trip out of it that, if you no, wanted to. God, that's not what we're about. No, <laughs> but like it is technically possible. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I'm, I'm gonna be a piece of it. Yeah, I'm gonna hold my, <laughs> uh, my comments about Galaxy's Edge till I get to my. Oh yeah. Good. Oh man. <laughs> okay. Look. I mean, they got to, at Celebration, they had these booths, right? And they had these fan festivals you can do. So I got to record a 30-second a fan festival about why I love Star Wars. And it was very heartfelt, I'll tell you that. They put all the fan festivals into a holocron, and that holocron is going to be placed in the park, which means I will be immortalized in the park. Sorry, Miguel. Yeah, I'll hold my comments until <laughs> Look, okay, so Galaxy's that's that's Edge my number up. three. What's your number three? Galaxy's Edge. I'm incredibly excited, yeah. though. I, I can't believe this is a real thing, especially mm-hmm. watching that panel. Yeah. And then watching the videos we were watching mm-hmm. earlier. Damn, I'm going to spend. Oh, yeah. And and Celebration is in Anaheim <laughs> next year. It's going to be great. So Time to open a couple new credit cards. <laughs> <laughs> My number three is Jedi Fallen Order. All right. Because I, from what I've heard, EA doesn't have their... Little raccoon Greasy little hands paws on it on the game as much as they did with the two Battlefront games. Yeah, so that in and of itself makes me a lot more excited for the game than I already was. Second point, it's single player. Yep, I myself am not a huge multiplayer person. I'm not. I'm not. Scruff. <laughs> I enjoy sitting down and enjoying a good story. I agree. I God, I love me a good story in a I video agree. game. It is my one of my favorite mediums for entertainment. I mean, it probably goes. It depends on the day, but I'll say it'll be currently video game, movie, book is my okay tiered enjoyment level. Yeah. I enjoy reading. I enjoy watching movies. I enjoy playing video games. But currently, I got out of school. I'm excited to play some games right now. But oh man, it just looks. Like the game, the Star Wars game that EA has been holding back on out on us. Yeah, I agree with like, that. Like we've we've gotten two games from EA and one story that takes like six hours. Yeah, and and a tiny story. They've had this license for how long, and they haven't done anything. I really want to say twenty twelve. Yeah, exactly. It's been seven years. We got the first Battlefront, which is eh, eh. all right. We got the horrific launch of Battlefront 2. That was that it, was noteworthy. Now it is a completely how, different game though. It, it is, is it is. They've definitely fixed a lot of things. They brought a lot of things that should have been there in the beginning. I will say I do play it sometimes now but it's too little too late. Yeah, it exactly. Like it's too little too late. But I am optimistic for for Jedi Fallen Order because oh man. Oh man, oh man. <laughs> Here's my thing though with Fallen Order. Um I was more excited for it before I saw the trailer. <laughs> um, <laughs> really? Yeah. I and and it's not that it looks like uh bad as far as production goes. Mm-hmm. It looks pretty incredible. Um I'm just nervous. I'm trepidatious okay. about the story. I just don't I don't like the because I I'm not a fan of the uh the Force Unleashed. Um 
ruffling a lot of feathers right now. Not a fan. <laughs> I never was a fan. I love Sam Witwer. I, I can't play the Force Unleashed. I, I know. It, I, no, for me, it's not anything because it's to do dated. with the story. It's so dated. You, I never played, played the it back first, in the day. No, we never played it back in the day. I played the first five minutes and could not get past yeah, cause I how think, dated it. Like I feel even comparing it to some of the games of the time, it didn't look that good. I agree. Um, and I think that if you're playing it now, it's probably mostly nostalgia driven, which is fine. But I just never liked the, it's just as a young, even as a, a child, when that game came out, I don't say, I don't know. How old was I? 13, maybe 14, something around there. Um, it just sort of bothered me seeing this immense grand power and trying to accept that this happened mm-hmm. within the world because, you know, you watch the original trilogy. Is it and, canon? Huh? Is it canon? I mean, when it came out <laughs> is, is it not anymore okay. um but like think i'm like yeah luke did some little flips and they tricked some people with their minds yeah. but they aren't pulling down death stars with their hands yeah or star destroyers they're not sh- shoving vader through a bunch of steel walls with the force mm-hmm. and then he just gets up and fights back like it just seemed so out there and wacky to me yeah. when it came out i just never accepted it and I'm not nervous that we're going to get that necessarily with Fallen Order. Mm-hmm. I just, I'm nervous that this, this kid is going to be too strong and like have his, have his <laughs> together too fast, yeah. you know? Like, yeah. I just don't want to, I just don't want him to, I thought that he'd be less powerful is what I'm saying. Okay. I thought it'd be more of like a survival, not survival. I know it'd be action still, but yeah, I don't know, a little more. You look, I mean, he was stopping a turbine while fighting a droid off, and it's pretty tough. Yeah, but I'm I'm still excited. I'm, I love I'm excited too. I love me a good video game. You know me, I don't like to buy full price games. No, when was what was the last full price? Game? God of War. But before that, I don't know. Yeah, I'm the one who Andromeda. The full, oh, I'm sorry. I know. I think that's what soured you on it. It did. That's really sad because there have been some phenomenal games. And I've played some phenomenal games. I'm just very picky. In the last year, I played Spider-Man. I played God of War. That's pretty much it. Yeah. I can't say the same. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Okay. But, yeah, still very excited. But my number two is The Mandalorian Mm -hmm. for so many reasons that I already listed. I spent so much time on it already, but it just looks like, it looks so original trilogy. Mm -hmm. Um, I just love every single aspect about the show i love how much passion there is in it i love the people behind it i love that the success story that is of dave filoni finally getting this shot and i do believe he should be directing film soon um i just love that favreau's getting into the vault he's one of my favorite people in the entire film industry and if anyone knows me personally you know that the film industry dominates my life it dominates my brain it's everything oh yeah (laughs) i breathe and think is movies or entertainment that kind of um it means a lot to see someone who I admire so much uh, kind of getting into the world that I love more than anything mm-hmm. as far as movies and you know entertainment goes in Star Wars. Uh, but I'll leave it at that. What's your number two? My number two, and I know you're going to oh, yeah. be upset with me. Oh, my God. Yeah. It and oh again, my. It, this one, my the difference between uh, my number one and number two are like less than uh, a tenth. I like thought we were on less the same than page. One, less than a one hundred. I thought we were on the same page. Less than a one hundred. I guess not. Eli, I will preface this by saying, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Eli, I'm just you kidding. know <laughs> my love of Disneyland. I do. That's why it's literally my. Let's say my excitement for. Number one is at nine point nine. It's at a nine point nine. I gotcha. My, <laughs> I said like, to give you a hard time. <laughs> like the other one is I'm like at even, a nine point eight nine mad. nine. <laughs> but I'm my scared. my number two is episode nine. The rise of Roll it again. Yeah, the I, rise of Skywalker. The rise of Skywalker. Oh man, there are so many great things, and I will say this since I didn't get to say this earlier because you started rambling, and I, I didn't, did. I yeah, didn't right. want to stop you because it Thanks. was so great. Once the wheel uh, starts rolling, but I remember I was in my room. I don't remember where. I think I was about to go to class. Yeah, and you texted me. You sent me a photo of where you were standing at when, like, when that they showed the trailer at celebration, and I just saw half of, oh, yeah. half of the picture. I just see half a star wars and i see skywalker on the side and i stopped in my tracks <laughs> and sent you a message wait is that the new title and you said hey go watch the trailer and i said 
there's a trailer so oh, yeah. before i I'm left the class this side of it before i left the class i sat my butt down in my chair yeah i i opened up my laptop went to youtube watched the trailer i cried <laughs> i i was alone <laughs> in my dorm room crying I mean, and i'm not, tearing up a, just that's thinking a normal day right just, that's a normal that was a normal tuesday <laughs> were you, let me ask were you crying before <laughs> no okay, not not okay. that day but no i sat down i watched it and like just from the very first second of it starting it was i friday. felt i felt it was friday yeah uh, I, <laughs> I got my days all mixed up okay no then I was probably going to the store then. Okay. Yeah. So I sat down in my room. I watched it. And from the very first moment of that, the trailer started playing, my eyes started watering. Dude, and I could I just know. feel myself just like, like I couldn't contr- help myself. I started crying because of how, like just the emotion I felt inside knowing that this is the end of this 40 year long and it's saga. been with us our whole lives you know like we grew up watching these movies like they've literally been a part of our lives since day one i mean you look around this room and <laughs> there's a lot of star a lot wars of star wars a lot more than i you know there are there's st- at least a couple star wars things on all four sides of this room yeah like def- star yes. wars is surrounding us currently and it's always surrounding us. But always surrounding us from from when we were little kids. No one's ever really gone to to, <laughs> to now uh, that we're we're adults. It's it's always been a part of our lives, and I would venture to say a big part of our lives. But like, yeah, it's just sort of. And I cannot, dude. I I am so excited to take you with me to Star Wars Celebration Anaheim 2020 oh, because there's just something different. Not that the not that we'll have a big trailer necessarily, mm-hmm. although we may have a trailer for Mandalorian season two yeah. or something. Um, but, and we may have a, we, we, I wouldn't doubt that we have a trailer for the Cassian show. I'll, I'll say, cause, well, by that time, will it not have come out yet? I don't think so. Okay. Um, or we might get an episode there. Who knows? Yeah. Um, but, uh, and also Bob Iger, there's another show coming. Oh man. Yeah. He kind of let that, I Big think maybe in Bob. one of the board calls. Yeah. I'll say there's a lot that came out during, yeah. during that board call. Um, I mean, I think, yeah, they did sort of slyly say there's another sh- live action show coming. Okay. What that will be can be a whole episode of speculation. But uh, we talk about episode nine, and I just want – well, I'll talk about it more because that's I'll, number I was one. about to say, I, I say we go with your number one and then my number one after because it'd be weird to go Yeah, yeah, you're right. Let's just nine, keep going into it because that's my number one. episode nine. So when I'm watching this trailer, you know, I just – I hear the breathing and – I don't want to sound weird, but like, I was like, oh my God, I'm about to see something that's going to, like, I was so, it's a split second. It's a split second, you know? You're just like yeah. breathing, and I'm like, oh my God. I was just nervous. I was yeah. nervous. What am I going to see? And of course, it's Ray there. Um, and she, the, I love the new outfit. Um, it's very, I don't know, it's just kind of powerful and confident, I'll mm-hmm. say. Yeah. Um, the most confident she's ever, even though, yes, she's like, I don't know, just the way she carries herself. I know it in the moment she's like sort of almost having a panic attack, yeah. it seems, but I do feel like there's certain um almost resolve once I guess it's once she turns and starts running. Yeah. Once she takes her uh saber off her belt, mm-hmm. I think that she just snaps into another zone. Yeah. Um and it's just it means a lot. Obviously I'm gonna reiterate it as much as I can because it's not a popular opinion, but Ray's my favorite Star Wars character of all time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, and it's just, and her, and, it's just because her and Finn, I, I just have such a connection to them and their relationship, especially in episode seven, mm-hmm. which I've seen over, oh, you know, every, I, I try and estimate it every once in a while. I really sit down and I'll actually write, yeah, you know, I write it down and try yeah. and figure out. Um, it's without a doubt, my most recent estimation I did right before celebration uh-huh. and while I was in Chicago, I watched it like four times, oh God, um, <laughs> but, um, it's gotta be somewhere around it, at very least 500. Uh, I don't doubt that. Probably at more. All. It has to like, be more. We need to sit like down and low end. I'd say 500 because Cause there was a point in, in time where you were watching it multiple times a, a day. day, multiple days a week. Yes. You watched it. You probably watched it twice a day for like a good almost month. It, at least is. And, and even after that, sometimes I did a day didn't go by where I didn't watch it. Yeah. Um, so it's up there. 
people don't really un- because I see these. Sorry to go on a tangent, but no, go go. I see these things on Instagram <laughs> where it's like, name a movie you've seen more than five times. <laughs> that rookie numbers times a hundred. Rookie numbers rookie is numbers. five times, and it's like movie pages. You know <laughs> what's a movie? My favorite is when you see a movie page. What's a movie you've seen more than once in theaters? Again, rookie numbers. R- rookie numbers. <laughs> Rookie numbers, all right. <laughs> yeah, I'm just sad to say what my most seen movie in theater. What is it? Oh my, what is it? It's Suicide Squad. That's all right, man. <laughs> I saw it four times in theaters. I saw it eight. I saw it eight times oh. in theaters. Never with the same people twice. That's, see, and that's what makes it more okay. I was forcing them to see it. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that I went with you your first time. Yeah, we went together because I saw it the first day. Yeah, we saw it in IMAX. Did we? Yeah. Okay, we because we have the IMAX. Tickets. You're right, and then the next day I saw it at Maya, and I saw it a couple more times. Yeah, I saw it a lot. I mean, I I didn't realize you saw it that many times. Yeah, I saw it eight times in theaters. Then I bought it the day it came out. I do remember that, and I refused. <laughs> yeah, you did. That's why I and bought it. I think you gifted it to me. One one of them. Did you buy one for me, or did I buy one? No, you never bought it. If it's if it's here, it's it's the one I bought. I think I might have given it to you just to you put did it for in the, the collection. collection. Yeah. Cause I, <laughs> I did not. Sorry, it's okay. I don't hate it. I, I just really don't. I like enjoyed it. it too much. I will say that. Hey, nothing wrong. And look, man. Even though I, I mean, I love things, and I, I, I'll talk <laughs> crap, but I, I don't like to hate on. You know, if you like it, you like it. There's nothing wrong with that. There's one thing you hate on me for liking. I do, <laughs> but you know, you no, because I still go. You know, I'll still. I paid for your ticket. I paid for my ticket. The last one. For what? transformers yeah i paid for my ticket i invited you guys i uh, paid for my ticket right but i paid for multiple tickets for you to go to star wars, to star wars transformers yeah <laughs> two three and four yeah 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 you're welcome <laughs> thank you uh anyway back to star back wars to Star Wars. um episode nine yes yeah, gonna change my life jj abrams coming back like people so many people backlash go back full backlash mode for no reason on the internet yeah, people um, are mean <laughs> look li- and i'm not exaggerating here if there was never a trailer for episode nine and all i saw was a black poster that said star wars ix directed by jj abrams i would buy 12 imax tickets a minute they go on sale yeah yeah you would i don't care about any marketing I, i'm sold jj mm-hmm. abrams star wars i am sold um mm-hmm. Now, I have to make a decision here. Yeah. Because uh-huh. do I need another episode nine Ray Hot Toy? Because I have the episode eight. Yeah, yeah, you do. Which is weird. I just liked the actual figure better than the episode seven, which is why why I went with episode eight. Um, if people don't know what a Hot Toy is, please look it up. They are, it will ruin your yeah. bank account, but it is worth it. They are incredible. I've I've managed to keep myself to one, which I was afraid when I bought this one that I'd go down that spiral. Yeah. Um. But, but you didn't. I, I didn't. I mean, I have a lot in my cart. <laughs> there's, there's some self control. There's you gotta have self control because you can go into debt real quick. Yeah, I mean, and it just depends on your situation. But you know, the they are very um, gracious. They know their their products are expensive, and they're all handmade and very well done. So they do offer payment plans, which is great. Which um, I'm considering. <laughs> I I mean, I did it for my Ray yeah. um, statue, or and I I will say they're I could have paid it off. They're they are figures. Stitch- statues. They're, I know. It's basically a statue for me, though. It's just in the box. Yeah. <laughs> At least I took it out of the brown box. Finally. The shipping box. It took you long enough. It took me... It took you a good couple months. It took me a year. It took you a year? Yep. You've had it for a year? I didn't take that out until last month. Oh, my God. Yep. Two Jesus. months ago. Two months ago. Yeah, and I got it about a year ago, so... <laughs> It's crazy. Yeah. Um, I need to get a case. But my, my dilemma is <laughs> because I want the Captain America mm-hmm. from Endgame. Yeah. But that Ray from episode nine looks great. And the Finn must and that Ray. I mean Ray. Yeah. I'm just imagining what the figure it's gonna look the same. Yeah. You know, Hot Toy's phenomenal. Yeah. But I also want a Finn to pair with Ray. I think you should get a Finn before you get another Ray. <laughs> but that episode nine costume looks fantastic. I guess it just comes down to a couple things. It's going to come down to what accessories they have mm-hmm. because if Finn wields a blade in episode mm-hmm. nine, I'm for sure getting Finn. I think so. Okay. Do you think he's going to use force? No. 
I don't think he will. Over or under 30%? You going under? Under. I'm going under. I'm going over. I have, a going weird over? Fe- I have a weird feeling that JJ, because of what happened to Finn in episode 8, I uh-huh. just have a weird feeling he's going to make it up to him. Okay. Like, like, just a personal, like, here you go, Boyega. Okay. <laughs> I, I mean I won't put I wouldn't put money on it. I uh-huh. just have a weird you feeling. You have a weird feeling. Okay. Like he just I don't know. I don't know. But episode nine. Okay, let's get yeah. into your number one. Let's get into this thing. Oh boy. My number one is I've decided this is this whole episode's gonna be celebration. Yeah. <laughs> okay. My number one is Galaxy's. Star Wars Galaxy's Edge at Disneyland Anaheim. Presented by Eli. Oh my word. So, if any of you know me, and I know Eli knows me, at least I hope, yeah, Disneyland is my single favorite place in the entire world. Behind Arby's. <laughs> <laughs> no, Disneyland um, is my favorite place in the world. There's nothing <laughs> There's nothing that tops Disneyland. I could spend years there and never get bored of it. Yeah, it it just you. brings me utter absolute joy until day three when my shins <laughs> hurt and i am yelling at eli because my legs and my feet hurt and the funny thing is i don't think people because i actually i don't think i know people don't a lot of people don't do Disneyland in the same way we do they do it wrong they do it right. we do it correct well, i'll say it takes a lot you i would say you can't have kids no um, no you can't, you can't. just you to, can't have anyone under the age of and a lot of people just aren't down 18 <laughs> which is okay as long as you're okay dividing up like like because we 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 trek man we go back and forth we will go from the furthest reach of california adventure so So, let's say we'll go go from incredicoaster in california adventure then decide hmm i want to ride the haunted mansion a lot of it goes by line waiting though which is on the exact opposite (laughs) side of disneyland so we will take our happy butts from one side of california adventure to the other side of disneyland and that is not and we'll just repeat that all day long. yeah we'll do that all day long we Um, walked over 12 miles every single day at least, yeah. I mean, I think thing, our lowest day was fourteen miles. And the other thing too is that, I mean, we pretty much try and get there when the gates open. Yeah, and we stay get there. Until yeah, we get there until the gates open. We leave when they say everybody needs to leave. Yeah, when they're we ushering not, you out. We do not have short days at Disneyland. <laughs> we don't. We don't go home and take a nap at the hotel. We no, just, you we just stick you, through it. You, you take. I just want to get my money's worth. Yeah, exactly. We want to get our money's worth. It's expensive. It's not cheap. Yeah. Which Um, is why I'm so excited for Galaxy's Edge. There are so many things that I'm going to spend so much money on. And you look at, you know, Disneyland, they've made these, you know, various land. They have Cars Land. Yeah. Marvel's getting its own land soon at California. Oh, God, I'm excited for it. And the thing is, even when you think about something like Cars Land, to get on a small tangent, but it's relevant. Mm, Yeah. Cars is not... it. Maybe the least beloved um, Pixar, Pixar film franchise. of all time. Yeah, um, and I do really love the first Cars movie, Cars Two. <laughs> mm, I like Cars Three. I but, still haven't seen it. I mean, it's not like uh, it's not Ratatouille. Yeah. It's not Toy yeah. Story. <laughs> it's not Wall-E. Yeah, I, oh God, you know. I love Wall-E. Um, but the point is, it's still a huge hit. The land because it's oh, impeccable. It's it, it's it re- truly makes you feel like you are in but the world the of cars. The point I'm bringing to you is that Galaxy's Edge is going to blow that out of the water. Oh my. They Disney and I I think they're imagineers. <laughs> Mike I was is about to <laughs> <laughs> But they they Doug are Chang imagineers is a big part of it as well. Doug Chang, are, vice president of Lucasfilm. Like they have truly outdone themselves in the past few years. They have gone above and beyond when it comes to their theming of their new lands and their new attractions to the point where I already know when I go to Galaxy's Edge next yeah. year, I'm I'm not going to feel like I'm in Anaheim, California. I'm going to feel like I'm on a different planet just because of the things we've seen from Galaxy's Edge are absolutely incredible. The experiences that they've made just for galaxy's edge like the new lightsaber building experience i'm gonna blow a lot of money on i'm gonna build my lightsaber and speaking of lightsabers they 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 leave no detail like out when if you buy a lightsaber at galaxy's edge the new rise of the resistance ride has lightsaber holders built into the ride because they know you're not just gonna lay your lightsaber at your feet that's like that's stupid treason (laughs) treason but they they thought of everything. We're gonna have that. We're gonna have 
droid building, a droid building experience, which I am more than. And it's like these aren't just like store. You're not gonna walk into a store and see like the Mickey Mouse keychains. Yeah, no, everything all... is so meticulously crafted to Star Wars. They even have special Coke items <laughs> that I yeah. don't drink soda anymore, but I'm going to buy them just so I can own them because they. They're it's cool, incredible. man. Thermal detonators. They made the Coca-Cola uh, logo out of... And I, I will admit, when I first saw the logo, I was like, that's not even Arabesque. That's just looking like... Oh, wait. <laughs> no, it is. See, it's in, in, and incredible. They, obviously, they have the Disney app that goes along with the um, the park, um, which is an incredible app on its own. And uh, if you don't use it when you go to Disney parks, you're doing it wrong yeah, because no, it's, it's so it changes incredible. the full experience. Um, and it helps us with like planning everything. Fast Pass is a must. Yeah, or Max Pass. Uh, but the thing is, when when you look at what they've expanded the app to, they're going to have a translating um, part of it. So you can look at, because there's Arabesh all over the park. Yeah. And you can hold it up and scan it, and it'll translate it for you. Mm-hmm. I don't need that. <laughs> yeah, I know you don't, you uh, nerd. Yeah. I mean, that's unfair calling you a nerd on a Star Wars podcast that I'm I mean, also yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> nerd. <laughs> but you're on a different level. Let's just acknowledge that you're yeah, on a different yeah, level yeah i agree um as far as well general nerddom i'd say yeah. but especially star wars i just oh man i couldn't not think about it. we get to pilot the millennium falcon we get to my pilot only thing it. I'm i realize every different person in the cockpit has a different role but like if you like say you got a whole squad in there know, you got you and five friends yep you guys are gonna i don't know if i want my thing. five friends <laughs> i'm saying the Maybe general I'll take your five friends ge- i wouldn't take my five friends <laughs> all right we'll c- we'll does anyone out there want to go with us <laughs> we'll collaborate on which five friends yeah but well if we're both going four friends yeah actually people, i feel confident in I could get two people on board yeah, myself. Same here. But yeah. they're, oh man. Like it's not, you don't get the same ride experience every time. Cause you can mess up and you get a different ride experience than someone who does hypothetically and yeah, have you everything heard, you perfect. Know, when you finish the ride, if you do well, when you walk out, it's going to be a nice walk out of the ride. Have you heard about this? No, I haven't. Okay. So if you do well and you know, you don't hit a bunch of asteroids and stuff. When you walk out, it's going to be a nice hallway. The hallway of the, the corridor of the Falcon is going to be nice and pristine. Mm-hmm. If you do bad, it's going to be sparking and and fluttering the lights, and it's all going to be... Like I said, incredible what insane. the Imagineers are doing with this There's place. No, I can't think of anything more immersive. Um, the other thing is just, it's going to be a big area. It's huge. And, um, it's their, what, their biggest expansion ever? Yeah, it is. And, um, oh... <laughs> my goodness i could not be and more excited i can't tell you man it's it's one thing to describe it but it's another thing to really see it um you know going to chicago was a big leap for me i've never flown i've never i mean i've gone out of state but it's just to vegas and all i did was eat I've gone to out of state oh wait we have we went to Oklahoma. Yeah, okay on my own i'll <laughs> yeah. say on my own like that um really but yeah <laughs> we're kids we we're all piled up in a van there's like seven <laughs> six people crazy uh, but you know, just it was it's a big trip, and when I tell you that you know Chicago is what the third biggest city in the nation, I don't know. I believe so. I believe it's New York, it's LA, big. Chicago. Um, <laughs> Star Wars took over Chicago. That is insane. I'm walking around downtown, every everywhere, everywhere you look, all the hotels, restaurants, it's just Star Wars people, and it's insane, man. And and you know they're gonna have a Star Wars celebration night at Disney parks. Mm-hmm. And yes, you go on any given day, that park is going to be filled with a lot of Star Wars fans. But imagine, <laughs> imagine a Star Wars land filled with the biggest Star Wars fans in in the world, the galaxy. Like, come on, the galaxy. Do you know what the world's name is? The planet. The planet. Yeah, putting you on the spot here. Mr. I don't Number know one. the. I don't know the oh. planet, but I know it's Black Spire Outpost. Yep, it's on the outer rim. Batu. Batu, I knew that, and I hate myself for know, not knowing that off yeah, the cuff. I'm, I'm a little upset Batu, with you. Black Spire Outpost, Outer Rim. Sorry, right, I'll give you that one. Uh, but I know everything that, that's going on inside. I'm going to hook you up with the stuff, though, because okay. I'm going to buy with it for sauce? myself. No, no. Um, <laughs> yeah, but no. Uh, yeah. Is but it the no. sauce? Or is it the juice? I would say it's the sauce. Okay. Because I was something that I love. We've already visited Batu in the canon a few times. Okay. And they're releasing, officially releasing, I, I got to listen to the author speak, which was really nice. Mm-hmm. Um, 
She didn't even, they're so under wraps with this park. She read a whole book on it. She didn't even get to visit. <laughs> yeah. Dang. They just sent her some pictures and stuff. Wish you were um, here. But it's coming out in September. They got a whole novel. They have a, a Alphabet Squadron. I think they said it's going to tie into it a bit. And certain comics. What I just love is that, and they said that all these books, they're going to have like real tie-ins to the world so you can Mm -hmm. yes you can be an average joe fan just like the movies whatever and love it but they're going to have have that out there for you that if you want you can read these books and then go and and understand the backstory this random like the way they described it is insane they said there's going to be like a a little notch made from something happening in a wall that you'll understand because of a comic or a book and like there might be something hanging or like a random character that's sort of behind a bar like some bars in a jail or whatever and and those will all all mean something if you read these you know these stories yeah and that's unprecedented that's it's really incredible because harry potter world yeah that's kind of what has the gold standard right now i think as far as like well, the one that's in Orlando. Yeah, the one that's in Orlando. That's full on Diagon yeah. Alley and everything. Yeah, yeah. And with a dragon. I think that this is going to Oh, it's gonna blow it out. It's gonna like, blow it out of the park because of how it's I mean, it's new. It's something different. Yeah. And I think that there's something special about going to somewhere you know. Mm-hmm. But I think that when you think about what a theme park is and, and the imagination of it, imagineers, yeah. what you want to do when you go to a theme park, you want to escape. And I think there's no better escape than going to a new world in somewhere you love because like yes you can visit hogwarts and all that whatever yeah. it is you know yeah but you already know it this yeah. is a new experience with a new place that it gets to be your story and i yeah. think that's something they pushed and it's something that's pretty incredible and um yeah it's i mean yeah it's you, gonna it's be your like, story oh, it's gonna be it's not just oh i'm going to to star wars land like you're they want you to build your story yeah, it's not like we're going to it's, jakku yeah, yeah like it, <laughs> or like desert. a different disney experience it's not like oh i'm going into radiator springs i'm seeing all but these what i'm that saying there. Is, but like they want you are a part of this story like they exactly. want you to flesh and out I think that, everything that you can in your star wars story well it would still be great i think it's definitely different and better than if and not that dude i would still be at a 10 of excitement but like if it was like come to the moon of endor at yeah. disney parks i don't think it'd be yeah. as special no not at all so yeah that's a big thing and, and they've already showed so many deep cuts you have hondo yep. um, from the clone wars and rebels coming back which is great um you have a lot of, you have loath cats mm-hmm. um throughout you have tons of and those oh, man nobody Just knows the what loath cats are just the theme. John Williams wrote original score for the of, park. Of the stores. Like, it is incredible. Like, <laughs> yeah. they, it, they're going to have, like, full on marketplace. I, basically. And something that I always joke about, you know, I do think of you as a financial advisor when I go on trips. Uh, I'm going to have for to hold this you, one. I'm going to have to hold your wallet. <laughs> I'm going to have to hold your wallet. Apple Pay, baby. <laughs> I'm going to have to hold your phone. Oh, I got to watch. I'm going to clip it off. Oh man, I I am ready to spend too much money there. I will build a lightsaber. I will build my droid. I will have his. Okay, backpack. I have a question. BB yeah. unit. Yes. Or yes. I, I, with how much yeah, I love you gotta, BB. You gotta go BB. Like and each of the droids. Are, oh man, I want to build an astromech and I want the party server. Yeah, I know you will. <laughs> but each of the droids you build are fully remote control, RC, which is and insane. And not that. Not just that, but. You know, if you have a light side droid, a resistance droid, yep. if you're in the resistance areas, it's all good. Happy beeps and boops. If you go to a smuggler area or an imperial area, they're going to be scared. They're, they're going to be, be scared. scared. Beeps and boops. Beeps and boops to say, I got a bad feeling about this. Yeah, exactly. You're going to we're, have to tell them happy to beeps. my son, BB-8. Yep. I will protect him with my life. <laughs> I know you will. I know you will. But, you know, Star Wars Celebration, I just want to speak on it a little more before we wrap this mm-hmm. up. Um... You know, they. I mean, I've been inspired, and I'll try and track the progress on either my Instagram, uh, which is Eli in the movies. No, it is not. No, it's not. It it's Eli Loren. Eli Loren. E L Y L O underscore Ren, um, or the at the Fan Awakens podcast on Instagram. Um, I think I'll probably start it pretty soon. Um, st- uh, co- my first cosplay. Woo. Uh, yeah, very first. Do you know what it's gonna be? Yet? I do. It's going to be a. Uh, Rebel pilot. Okay. Um, I've talked to a lot of guys out there who who do some cosplaying, mm-hmm. um, 
and they told me about i didn't even know there's a whole forum up for it you know Dude, they tell you exactly what you need and it's crazy cool yeah and and i was listening to two guys who had i mean they both had rebel pilot um costumes mm-hmm. looked i mean almost exactly the same yeah but they used so many different things in each really? other like different things for the for the chest plates mm-hmm. and ev- everything but it looked fantastic yeah um i just want to be part of a group photo <laughs> hey eli uh gotta be your co-pilot yeah gotta be your co-pilot chewy i i will be the chewy to your han <laughs> I, I i appreciate that miguel yeah of course we're shaking hands you guys can't see it but oh, it just happened hands. uh but yeah a lot of things and then you know just walking the floor getting to just candidly see people who i admire within the star wars fan base uh i got to see ken knapps talking just with scrimshaw on the floor right before going to the Schmodown event, which was incredible. Um, you reminded him to pick up his bag of yep, he very expensive figures. Returned some um, some figures to Mister Gro- Joseph Scrimshaw, and uh, <laughs> you know this that that just shows how good of a person you are. Well, you know, I I don't know if I'll say that, but I will say that there's an effect that celebration has on you. Um, <laughs> it's just so positive yeah. all around. Everybody's so so easy to because. You know, walking around, it's not always easy to approach people. Yeah. Uh, at Celebration, I did not have any hesitation approaching anyone, really. You, you feel like you can just spark up a conversation with yeah. anybody there. Um, and we the first day, the preview day, mm-hmm. we decided it'd be a good idea to try and get the store. Mm-hmm. Uh, and thank God, <laughs> because the app did some wonderful things, but it was not ready, I'll say that. There's supposed to be lightning line access that hardly ever worked. Um, I waited in that line for nine plus hours just to buy my merch. Thank God I did it on Thursday. Yeah. Because I didn't have to miss getting to see anyone. I do want to say it's so worth going to Celebration, man. The money, just to, I yeah. mean, God, I got to see J.J. Abrams, John Boyega, Daisy Ridley, Oscar Isaac, Kelly Mary Tran. The list goes on. Ray Park, um, Imagineers, yeah. Jonas Suatamo, what? J- Janina Gavankar. Wonderful man. He oh, is. sorry. I'm going to leave this. <laughs> I'm going to end this soon. But I just want to say one of my absolute, absolute favorite parts of Star Wars Celebration. So uh, Claudia Gray is, without a doubt, in my opinion, the best Star Wars author um, currently working. Mm-hmm. She is four books deep. You're going to start reading them soon, which yeah, I'm glad Yeah, probably about. in the next week. Um, but she she actually inspired me to read in general. I never read. I never considered no, myself not. a reader um, before Kinda picking up. made fun up. of me for reading. I did. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Who's laughing now? I don't know. Not not me. I'm proud of you. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. No, I'm uh, not saying that jokingly. I really am proud. I appreciate that. But, you know, I picked up her book, Lost Stars, and it sort of ignited this whole um, passion for reading for me, ability to you know, just sit down and read a book all day if I chose to mm-hmm. um, because she's just so wonderful. And so I read Lost Stars so fast. Then Bloodline, Leia, and now Master and Apprentice I'm getting through, um, which is so good. But, you know, it meant a lot to me. And she had a, a book signing there. Um, she was giving away or selling, you know, they had Star Wars Celebration exclusive books for Master and Apprentice. Yeah. And it comes with an awesome pin that's exclusive. And, you know, I, I waited in line. As soon as the, the show floor opened, I walked over to the booth. It's like the first 50 people get wristbands. Um, and this place was packed, right? I walk, I'm like, oh, my God, there's no way. There's no way I'm going to get a wristband. So I try anyways. I get in. I, I And, you know, I'm trying to be nice. I'm not pushing anyone. I'm just sort of shuffling my way to the front. And my arms are at my sides. I'm not. Yeah. People are pushing and shoving. It's terrible. And the people at the booth are like yelling at them to please stop. And that's the the only bad thing about celebration is if you're trying to get something exclusive right at the beginning, people will go mad. Oh yeah. <laughs> but I make my way to the front, mm-hmm. and I get a wristband. I'm getting out because you you got to wait like an hour to buy one. Yeah. And someone rips off my wristband as I'm yeah. making my way out. Oh my god, I was. I was like devastated. It's like there's no, I wasn't yeah. even like heated. I was just like heartbroken because yeah. I'm like, I didn't even think I'd make it through there at all. Mm-hmm. And, and so I'm like, I had nothing. I mean, I just went right back in. I yeah. went right back into the pile of people. I shimmy my way and I felt bad because I see people who were there before me yeah. the first time who were just kept getting pushed to the sides. 
and I, luckily I got back through. They gave me another wristband, um, and that was right before they ran out. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's a signed copy and everything, but I really wanted to meet her. I got to mm. see her at a panel previously that day, but later she had a book signing. I go really early, yeah. and they send me away. They're like, no, don't start lining up yet. Come back at 5. Mm-hmm. I come back at 4.58. They're like, the line's capped. And I was like, yeah. what? And so I had to stand beyond the guy that said the line capped f- for about an hour. And he kept telling me, you know, I don't know if we're going to be able to. I don't know if we're going to be able to. You can stand there, but I can't make you any promises. Yeah. Luckily, she is a saint, <laughs> and I got to go through. And and I will say, she was being extremely nice to everybody, you know. You know, thank you for buying the book. Thank you for buying the book. What's your name? Thank you for buying the book. Um, but I knew I had to say something. So when I got up there, uh, you know, I just told her that, you know, thank you for taking your time to do this. And mm-hmm. I just want to let her, you know, that, you know, I, I – I'm a reader because of Lost Stars, because of your book. And yeah. it sort of, it did change my life. You know, it changed my life quite a bit. Um, and I, it, it just, it touched her and I could tell. And she was like, she stopped for a second. She kind of talked to me for a few moments, telling her, telling me how much that meant to her. And, mm-hmm. you know, that really means a lot, you know, and yeah. it meant a lot to me to share that moment. And we talked for a few moments afterwards and she signed it. Like, well, she personalized it for me. Yeah. And I went on and had my way, but you know, it made her smile and it meant a lot to me to have that moment. And it's just sort of, that's like the peak of Star Wars Celebration. You know, I think Mm -hmm. that that moment sort of just shows you exactly what Star Wars Celebration is all about. Yeah. Um, And so that's what I want to leave this podcast with. Just a story right there that I think I'll carry with me forever. I got the book right there on my, uh, on my shelf and, you know, that's it. Star Wars Celebration 2020, we will be covering a lot of stuff leading <laughs> up to that a year from now. Oh, yeah. I don't know when the tickets are going to go on sale. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> um, obviously, I think they realize that we're all broke now. Yeah. So they got to give us till at least, like, September, I'd yeah, hope. Yeah, I hope so. Um, that's when I should be getting some more money. <laughs> but I'll be prepared. Yeah. Um, oh, I'll be prepared for the convention. Hooey. <laughs> I'm ready to be broke right after that. Yep, same. Ready to go back to school and just be sad and broke <laughs> because sad and it's broke. all over. Eating a half pack of noodles a day. <laughs> no, I'll hopefully be working the same uh, job, so right. I'll get, be getting food yeah. for free. But uh, with that, episode 15 of The Fan Awakens. Thank you guys for listening. Um, I just want to say thank you again to my new co-host, my brother Miguel. You can find us at... Where can I find you? Uh, What is my Instagram? Well, you can th- find me at Elilo Ren. On Instagram, you can find us at the Fan Awakens Podcast on Instagram. I don't think we have a Twitter, no. but uh, Phantom of Movies on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, follow us; we'll be posting pictures regularly. What's your Instagram, buddy? My Instagram is Jalapena. That is J A L E P E N A zero one. That is Jalapena. You know that's not how you spell Jalapeno. Yeah, it is J A L A. No way. Yeah. I've oh, been meaning wow. to I tell you this for a long stupid. time. I'm sorry. I just wasted this whole. But I remember. When, oh, man. I got to change that <laughs> right when now. You, when you told me it. I think I, with an A was taken at the time. Yeah, I think, that's, I think what, that's why. Yeah, because I looked it up when you told me you changed your name. We really need to end this. All right, guys. Thank you. Yeah, it's taken.